Do 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 do. Here we are in another review of the Honda E, and I have done 5,492 miles. I was hoping to bring you the 5,000 mile review, which is what this is. So I'm going to head off and just talk about what I found so far and how I've been getting on with the Honda E. Well, it has been an enjoyable, for sure, 5,000 miles. Let's start with one benefit of this Honda E. Every time I get into it, I smile when I'm driving it. It is a thoroughly enjoyable car to drive. Love it, every single time. It has not worn off. I thought it might be an interim thing. Not been the case. But let's go through a little list now of negatives that I've come across from daily use. One of those is, and it's quite frustrating, is it unlocks itself, which won't be bespoke to this car, but ones with the wireless key, it unlocks itself when you're in the house. So I go to make a cup of tea and I hear the car go clunk and the front lights come on, which would be nice if I was trying to go out there in pitch black, but I'm not. And in turn, what that does is it bright, sort of bright lights shining out towards the neighbor's house, which is not ideal, let's be honest. What I also find sometimes is it's not locked when I come to the car. So I don't know if that's when it unlocks itself with the key and sometimes it doesn't re-lock itself, or that's when I get out of the car and walk away and forget to lock it. What seems to happen with the Renault I get out of the car, walk away from it, and it goes bloop, bloop, and locks itself when you go a certain distance away. It doesn't seem to do that on this, so if anybody knows how to make that work properly and reliably, comment below. I would be much interested in that. I have actually had a creaking. When you adjust the mirror, it's a creaking noise just up behind. Now, most ice cars, so petrol engine, diesel engine cars, creaking and stuff isn't really a problem, but with electric cars, because they're so quiet, you hear everything. So you get a little creaking noise going on, it really bugs you. Now I can get around that once I've adjusted the mirror, which is rarely, it's only if we swap over or something, someone else is driving, I just press on the plastic surround and then it doesn't do it again until the next time it's adjusted. Or you get really cold weather and it starts to warm up, and then it creaks and you press it and it works again. I think it's probably an uh, adhesive tape or a glue is the most likely uh, answer to that one, I think, anyway. I noticed one day that a paint strip of the bonnet in an area where you don't get wear and tear, where there should no, definitely not be a flaking of paint, and little strips come off the bonnet, which is a little bit annoying. Now, they have sent me replacement paints so I can I got a bit of undercoat with that and the actual paint color so I can fix it but that is a little frustration it is a steel bonnet so it could rust so that's a bit of a shame so yeah 10 years down the line probably gonna get a bit of bubbling in that area but I'm gonna fix it with this maybe it's a one-off anyone else experienced that comment below I have had an instance with this window, so the driver's window, when you open the door it drops and when you close it it goes back up again. I've had it where it won't close, so I'm driving along and it's going and it keeps doing that and not settling itself. What it turned out to be is the rubber seal around the outside where the window's supposed to go up into that had curled over on itself and it was just getting stuck so it's going up and then coming back down again. It has only done that once. So I don't know what I was all about. It wasn't when I first had it and it wasn't recently. It was about a month or so ago. It just decided it was going to do that on a journey somewhere. It was constantly up and down, up and down the whole journey. And eventually it stops and it waits about a minute and starts doing it again. Quite frustrating. But once I'd uh, run my finger along the seal, it hasn't done it since. Strange. Driver's door or any, well, either of the doors, not any door, either of the doors with the pop-out handles. Now, let's discuss that. What seems to happen is when it's tipping down with rain and those sensors get wet, 
so they got a sensor on it to tell you're holding it, it doesn't work. So when you put your when it pops open, you put your finger on it, it senses that you're touching it, and then you can hear it click and it unlocks the car. But it, if it's wet, it doesn't seem to work. So it's almost completely hopeless. So you're there going, oh come on, it won't open. Usually when you've got your hands full, that's when it's soaking wet. So not light rain, but real heavy rain, and you open up the handle, and the handles, when they pop open, of course, if it's t bucketed it down, rain falls on top of it, and you get rain in them anyway when they're closed. Yeah, it doesn't work then. You can then get the key fob out and press unlock, and then it unlocks the car, but if the key's in your pocket, you've got your wallet in there and your phone in there and that sort of business, and you're carrying stuff like very often I am, m more or less hopeless. You have to put everything on the wet floor or on the roof of the car, which is soaking wet, and then fumble around to get a key out, unlock it, open the car door, then load all yourself back up again and put it in the car. That's just really annoying. Makes me really cross that one. Also, with the port flap at the front, so the actual cover, the main cover, and those doors, if it's really icy, then they seize up, so they get frozen shut. It's a, a tap and undoes it. You have to push it slightly in it. So, and that was in minus four, minus five, it did that. Um, so not insurmountable but nonetheless it, it does um, they do ice up automatic lights now I get reports on this almost any car automatic lights they kind of work 98% of the time I would have said but you can't trust the intelligence behind it because every now and again it does one of two annoying things it either doesn't dip when you're approaching a car and you suddenly realize oh my goodness i'm blinding them and they're flashing at you because it hasn't auto dipped you think why on earth didn't that auto dip got bright lights coming towards you um or it dips and then flashes again it's like ooh, and then it actually looks like you flash someone which is a little bit annoying so you are able to turn those off apparently if you pull the stalk in um 40 seconds or something then you can actually turn that off. You can also roll the, the barrel on the stalk here and you can turn them off. Or when you're driving along, you can just flash when there's no one there, obviously, and then that disables the auto dip beam. So not massively reliable, is in like 98% reliable. So I was like, yay, but it's just that 2%. You can't actually sit comfortably. And I actually find myself going, just double checking on the dash, which is up here. Has it dipped? Oh, it has. And you have to take your eyes off the road. And I, Genuinely, that's actually quite problematic. That thinking process and having to look because I just double check I'm actually dipped. And if you're not, you're like, uh, pull in. And then once you've dipped for the car, of course, that's disabled the auto beam. Then it's like, oh my goodness. So, yeah, a bit fiddly that one. So, that's kind of those grumbles out the way. Things I do like. So, when you're slowing down with all these cameras on this car, so you've got two cameras in each mirror. You've got a front facing camera, which I think is down um, between the headlights, and you've got a rear camera as well. When you're going really slow and it's a tight lane, those cameras will automatically come on, which is really neat. So below a certain speed, they come on and let you know how close you are to stuff. The only real camera that gets dirty, which sort of stops that being as useful as it could be, is the rear one. So you have to kind of keep that quite clear and in this terrible salty muddy time we're having at the moment and rainy uh, that gets dirty quite quickly but resolvable quick wipe job done having two rear mirrors is pretty neat we've got the standard mirror so you can just see straight from here out the back and you've got the camera mirror and a simple flick and you get that on it's a weird sensation to get used to because of course the camera is on the outside of the car so you're not looking through the rear windscreen you're looking from the outside of the car so the very very tail end of the car but it's useful especially if you've got stuff in the back that's stacked up high and you can't use this mirror you've actually got a camera on the outside and you can see what's going on which in itself is very neat the quality of this car so not only the ride quality but the quality of the switch gear of the seats of everything in here is so good it's so nice and the ride quality is amazing. And so I thoroughly enjoy driving this car. I absolutely love it. Now range, range could be an issue for some people. I've not found it an issue in my daily driving and whatever it is now, I've just, just come up to 5,500 miles. I've not found it to be an issue at all. One thing I do find is that the heating 
when you've got the heating on, it re drastically reduces the range. So if you don't have heating, you get considerably more. That's the same with all electric cars. And so the heating element on this, it consumes a lot of power. So having that off, you save a lot. One thing I have found is by having the heated seat on and the heated steering wheel, it's almost enough, unless it's zero and below, then you definitely want the heating on to maintain a nice, cozy atmosphere in the car. Infotainment, of course, is legendary, so it's amazing. It's not let me down, it's not crashed out, it's worked spot on, no issues. So really, really enjoy that. There's the uh, Roku dongle, which I got, which I plug into it. So if you're sat charging, uh, you can watch Netflix, YouTube, whatever you like, really, Apple TV. It's all there, you can use that. They could do with some more apps, I suppose they could do with updating it. One thing I do wonder is, with all this tech on board, could it fully self-drive? So I can get it to partially self-drive with the cruise control, the adaptive cruise control. Not only the adaptive cruise control, but the one pedal driving. So you've got adaptive cruise control and the one pedal driving. But the adaptive cruise control on it turns off one pedal driving, which is fine because it's controlling the braking for you. I then also set the lane assist, click that on and it stays within its lane. So if you're on a motorway or something, it works absolutely fine. I've not had any issues with it across. You can travel for 40 minutes like I did and not hardly have to do anything at all. Just put your finger on the steering wheel and you're just ready to take over if something goes wrong. I can't help but think though, with all this technology on board, actually they could go even further with this. And you know little Honda robot, the little dude, one of the first walking robots. You'd think being a robotics company as well, they would be able to enter into that field of self-driving fairly confidently but we shall see wouldn't it be lovely if one day they said do you want to pay a couple of grand to have full self-driving now it's a split community in that front some people do not want self-driving cars and some do some will actually want to drive the thing themselves um, but I would kind of like best of both worlds really if this could do it that'd be awesome as a driving car it's amazing it's great fun it's a right blast rear wheel drive real pokey 153 brake horsepower I think it is it's just great fun but at the same time if I thought, actually, I'd rather drive itself, that would be pretty neat too. So it picks up all the cam, the, the road signs, should I say, everything like that it works, it's fine. And now it's flashing at me, saying this is the speed you should be doing. Um, so it gives you a little heads up, tells you about no overtaking, loads of things. I mean, if you have a look at the user manual online, it is crammed full of stuff. Now I have had people write to me saying they got one on order. I had someone write to me the other day saying they've got theirs and I absolutely love it. And they're not concerned about the range at all. It's been a cracking little car. Um, so would I recommend this car? Well, so far, I've got no faults with it at 5,502 miles. It is working fine. Apart, obviously the things I've mentioned, I've been very transparent about those. Oh, it's just a gorgeous car, it really is. So I would recommend it. I mean, if you can go and buy one and you're not wanting to do 200 miles on a single charge, then it's a barrel of laughs, it really is. And the power delivery is incredible. It's like on the motorway, you can go from, you can be sat at 50, put the throttle down and it just, before you know it, you're at 70 odd. And it's just effortless, completely effortless. Amazing car, <laughs> really is. It would be lush if they could open up that full battery capacity, even if you have to press a button or sign a disclaimer or something to say, oh well, I'll reduce my warranty down by X amount because you will get a lot more miles there, but it can do a lot more with its uh, full battery capacity. And that'd just be pretty neat to be able to harness all of that. But otherwise, everything else, I mean, if, for instance, if this car did 200 miles per charge, I would most likely be selling the Zoe, apart from the fact that I've got a Husky. And so he's never been in this car because I need to resell it. This car's gonna be kept pristine. So once I get to 50,000, it's gonna be sold. But I would, yeah, you know, I just wanna sell that Zoe and get in this and drive this everywhere, but it would get trashed with the dog I've got. Maybe if I should get a little pug or something and sell Bruce. It's an idea. Right, well, I hope that has been insightful. I don't know. I've just tried to run through everything that I've experienced from a, an, you know, an owner's point of view. I bought this car, I own it. I don't owe anybody any praise for this car. I could say whatever I like and I'm free to do so. So if you've got any questions, then just let me know below in the comments. That would be really good. I can then try and answer them if I can. Obviously, I don't know everything about this car, but 
5,500 miles. I've done whatever it is, around about 3,000 of those. Um, yeah, loving it, absolutely loving it. So, I will see you on the next video. The reason I haven't been uploading much because obviously everything's locked down. As soon as it is not locked down, we'll be visiting all the Honda dealers in the United Kingdom, one by one, and then we'll film each trip. I'm gonna try and edit it on the go, might even do some live streams whilst we're going. So subscribe, stick around, subscribe to the channel, click like, share the videos, etc. Um, but there we go. I hope you found this useful. See you on the next one.